Welcome to episode number 14 of my exercise series, Introduction to Physics. We are still at the topic of gravitation, gravitational fields. And compared to last time, this time we are actually talking about a two-body system. So we do have the Earth, we do have the Moon. What is the force field in between? And without further talking, let's just get on with it. At a certain point between Earth and Moon, the resulting gravitational force is zero. A. At what distance x from the center of the Earth is this place? And B. What percentage of the second cosmic velocity must be given to a spaceship on Earth in order to reach this point? The mass ratio, Earth to Moon, is mu equals 81.3. The mean distance between center of Earth and center of Moon, of course, R, is 384,400 kilometers, and the Earth's radius, the uppercase R, equals 6,378 kilometers. So we have only three variables that are given. We know the mass ratio mu equals 81.3 which means that the mass of Earth is 81.3 times the mass of the Moon. We know that the average distance between center of Earth and center of Moon is 384,400 kilometers, whereas the radius of Earth, assuming it's spherical, r equals 6,378 kilometers. And we are searching under point A, for the distance x, where the gravitational fields cancel out, and under b we are looking for the velocity with respect to the second cosmic velocity that we have to give to a certain object in order to reach this point x. So it basically looks like this. We have Earth, we have the Moon, and somewhere in between is this point x, and we want to reach it. So. What does this mean? Basically, it means that we do have gravitational forces pulling on the satellite. And we consider it to be only a, say, three-body problem. We do have the satellite, but only two other objects are pulling on the satellite. On one hand, it's the gravitational force coming from Earth. Let's call it Fg. And Fg equals gamma, the gravitational constant, which you may also know as an uppercase G, multiplied with ms, the mass of the satellite, and m, the mass of the Earth. And this product is divided by the distance squared. And at point x, the distance, well, it's actually x squared, of course. On the other hand, there's also the gravitational force coming from the Moon that pulls on the satellite. It has the same structure. Fg equals gamma ms, and in this case it's lowercase m for the mass of the Moon, divided by distance squared. And this distance is the distance between the satellite and the center of the Moon, which is actually equals to the distance between center of Earth and center of Moon, minus the distance from the center of Earth to the satellite. And yes, the gravitational constant, well, it actually is a constant, which is equal to 6.674 times 10 to the power of minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram and second squared. And as I've mentioned before, ms is the mass of the satellite, the uppercase m is the mass of Earth, and the lowercase m is the mass of Moon. Is this enough to solve our problem? Well, think about it. We do have the gravitational forces coming from Earth and Moon pulling on our satellite, but we've placed it in exactly the spot X where the gravitational fields cancel one another out. Which means that we are at equilibrium. Hence, gamma ms uppercase m divided by x squared equals gamma ms lowercase m divided by r minus x squared. Hence, we can see that in this case, 
the gravitational constant gamma does not matter. And also the mass of the satellite does not matter. And what we get is m, the mass of Earth, divided by x squared equals m, mass of Moon, divided by r minus x squared. And yes, we are looking for x and we've given the distance r, but what about the masses? They were not given and we don't want to look them up. But when you think back, you may realize that we had given the mass ratio Earth to Moon mu as 81.3. So we can use this actually because mu is nothing more than uppercase m divided by lowercase m and if you look up into the previous equation you see that we do have the uppercase and the lowercase m there and if we divide the whole equation just by m, the lowercase m of course, and then multiply this equation with x squared. What we get is that our mu equals to x squared divided by r minus x squared. And yes, we can solve this because x is the only unknown variable. We have mu and we have r. And well, let's make it as easy as possible. Let's take the square root out of the whole equation. So we take the square root on the left hand side, then we have the square root of mu, and we take the square root on the right hand side, which means that what's left over is x divided by r minus x. Now, of course, from a mathematical point of view, we have to be careful when we do something like this, because just for a moment, think about it in mathematical terms. If you take a number, say three, and you square it, 3 times 3 equals 9. But the square root of 9 is not just 3, because minus 3 multiplied with minus 3 is also 9. So the square root out of 9 may be 3 or it may be minus 3. But in our particular case, we know that mu, x and r are positive values. And in addition, we know that the distance r between the centers of Earth and Moon is of course larger than the distance of an object that's somewhere between Earth and Moon. So it's okay to do it here, but for any other case you may have to be careful. But we can go ahead with this solving it. So we take the square root of mu as x divided by r minus x and we want to put everything that's related to x on one side and everything else on the other side. And in an intermediate step, we get that the square root of mu times r equals the square root of mu plus 1 times x. Hence, x, the point that we are looking for, equals to the square root of mu divided by the square root of mu plus 1 multiplied with the distance r. And what we get? is that x equals 346,024 kilometers, which is actually nowhere near Earth. And I suppose it makes sense because Earth has, as we've seen, a much larger mass than the Moon and its gravitational field, hence, is much stronger. So this point has to be much closer to the Moon than to the Earth. But wait, we're not done yet, right? But we are looking for, in addition to the velocity in order to reach this point. How do we approach this problem? We have to give our satellite a velocity in order for it to start. And an object that has a velocity basically has some kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy can be calculated as the mass divided by 2, multiplied with its velocity squared. And of course, the mass of the satellite is still ms. Now, this kinetic energy will be transformed during the motion of the satellite into work. So basically, it has to do some work in order to work itself against the gravitational field of Earth. So the work W equals the integral over 
Fg, the gravitational force, dr, where in this case r is just a variable. It's no longer the distance as before between center of Earth and center of Moon, it's just any distance between center of Earth and somewhere around us, some point. But this is not enough, because we are not just looking for the general work. We are looking for the work in order to get our object from the surface of Earth to the point X, which means that we are looking actually for the integral over FGDR, but from the lower boundary R, the surface of Earth, to the point X. And now we can actually start to substitute Fg, the gravitational force, by gamma ms, uppercase m, mass of Earth, against which we are fighting from the satellite's point of view to get away from the force field, divided by the distance squared. And the distance at any point r is actually r. So we are nearly done. Because we've just said that the kinetic energy is transformed into work. And in order to reach point x, we want to take enough energy to, you know, just get there. So kinetic energy equals work w. Hence, we have on the left hand side, ms half multiplied with v squared is equal to the integral from r to x gamma ms uppercase m, multiplied with 1 over r squared dr. And we can solve this integral. It's not that complicated because we see already gamma is a constant. ms, the mass of the satellite, is a constant. And yes, the mass of Earth is also more or less a constant. So we just have to take the integral over 1 over r squared dr. And this is equal to the integral over r to the power of minus 2 dr. And from a purely mathematical point, this is nothing more than minus 1 over r. Of course, in the boundaries from uppercase r to x. So what we get is that ms half multiplied with v squared equals gamma ms m multiplied with minus 1 over r in the boundaries from uppercase r to x. So we have to put x and the uppercase r into the last term. And it's always upper boundary minus lower boundary. So what we get is that v squared equals 2 times gamma times m. And yes, we realize that the mass of the satellite is gone again. Multiplied with minus 1 over x plus 1 over r. And hence, the velocity v that we have to give to our satellite in order to reach point x is the square root of 2 times gamma m multiplied with 1 over r minus 1 over x. But wait, there is a little catch because we are not looking for the actual velocity. We are looking for the velocity with respect to the second cosmic velocity. And by the way, yes, we've seen that gamma is a constant and we can take it out of some textbook, but also m, the mass of Earth, wasn't actually given. Yes, you could say, come on, we have the internet, we have some physics books, we can look it up, but we don't have to, right? Maybe we don't, because as I said, we are looking for v in relation to v2. So what is v2? v2 is the second cosmic velocity. And you may actually also know it under its name escape velocity, which means that it's the minimum speed that is needed for a non-propelled object to escape from the gravitational influence, in our case of Earth. Of course, this could be applied to any other planet or moon. But in our case, as I said, it's Earth. And in general, it can be calculated v2 as the square root of 2 times gamma multiplied with the mass of the respective object that has this strong gravitational field that we want to escape 
in our case, so it's the uppercase M, divided by the radius of the respective planet, moon, whatever, in our case, Earth. And, well, this is actually enough to solve our problem, because it means V in relation to V2 is nothing more than the square root of 2 gamma M multiplied with 1 over R minus 1 over X, and all of this divided by the square root of 2 gamma M divided by R. And yes, on the right hand side, we can take the square root over all variables, and then we see that the two cancels out, the gamma cancels out, and the mass m cancels out. And all that's left is v in relation to v2 equals to the square root of r multiplied with 1 over r minus 1 over x, which is actually the square root of 1 minus r over x. And yes, we've calculated x and r. The radius of Earth was given, so we can just put it into a calculator and what we get is that v in relation to v2 equals 0.99, which means that to a satellite in order to reach point x we have to give 99% of the second cosmic velocity. So I hope that you enjoyed this very special problem. Now, of course, we have to take into account when we go out into reality that Earth and Moon are not, you know, the only bodies out in space. Of course, if we take it literally, it's a many-body system. But the further a body away, if it doesn't have, you know, an extremely huge mass, we do not have to take it into consideration for rough approximation. Then again, our Sun is very large and we do have some neighboring planets, so it could be a very complex problem. But for a first approximation, I hope it gives you a good idea about the strengths of the gravitational fields of Earth and Moon. And with this, I would like to thank you for your kind attention and I hope to see you soon for another video. Bye!